Greetings for everyone. MATLAB Grader is an online assessment tool which helps teachers in preparing and evaluating homework practices or classroom assessments. In this video, I'm going to go a little bit into details with tricks and best practices. I'm Ákos Koppánkis, working at the Gamax Laboratory Solutions, which is a partner company of MathWorks. I work as a customer success engineer, providing technical support for teachers and researchers at universities in our region. The topics to be discussed are how are assessment tests evaluated? How should teachers prepare their own scripts or functions to be referenced in Grader? In which way can students upload and use their own files in Grader in order to extend the possibilities and evaluate code originating from the desktop computer including simulink-based solutions. And finally, how can teachers randomize or personalize assessment parameters? First, we need to keep in mind that all the variables created in the reference solution are stored as one of the field of the struct object called reference variables, meaning that variables x and y can be referenced in the test code by reference variable dot x and reference variables dot y. Variables in the scope of the learner solution are referenced as they are. How does an assessment criteria work? It's simple. A test results in fail only if the code in it throws an error. In any other solution, when the code is syntactically correct and runs without throwing an error, will result in success. Now let's check it out in practice. Let's use a very simple example about Pythagorean theorem. Sides A and B are given. The third side C, which is the hypotenuse, has to be calculated. There are four type of tests. Three for special purposes. And the last one, MATLAB code for general test implementation. In the case of the special purpose tests, there are special functions behind, such as assess variable equal, assess function present, or assess function absent. These functions can be called explicitly and parameterized further. For example, assess variable equal function should be called to set a numerical tolerance explicitly for value comparison. As you can see, variable C in the reference solution is represented by the reference variables dot C. Let's go more general and have a look at the function assert. Assert function throws an error if given condition is false. In the test 2, a similar logic is implemented, the use of the assert function. However, this way, any assessment logic you want can be implemented. Let's check out the learner preview, type the expected solution, submit, and we will see all these tests succeed. In order to leverage the potential in MATLAB Creator, you may want to prepare functions or scripts in your desktop MATLAB and then upload your files into Creator. These files can be used when preparing your testing criteria. The files added to Creator project are not hidden from the students. However, most probably, you don't want them to read these files. This is where the p-code function comes into the picture. Normally, scripts or functions such as .m files can be read by human just by opening them in a text editor. The function p-code generates a file with the same name but with the extension of .p. These p files will have the same functionality as the original M files, however, P files are not understandable anymore by any person. Let's check it out. In practice, again, the problem with the Pythagorean theorem. And we see that a file graph triangle.m is added to the project 
and actually used as a part of the pretest. Okay, when checking out the learner preview, the pretest serves as a graphical feedback of our solution. Again, this is just an example for the sake of demonstration. However, students can actually check out what files are there available. Yes, and graph triangle.m is available here. And they may check out the content of these files. How to prevent this? Let's go to MATLAB and we see the same file prepared here. Let's call the pcode function. Hit enter. And the file graph triangle.p is generated. Delete this file and use the other one instead. The one with the extension of P. Let's go again to the learner preview. First of all, let's check out functionality. Yes, it has the same functionality and You can see that the file is there. And let's look at it. Yeah. There is no option for that anymore. Cheating is a common issue when assessing the students. How can you randomize the parameters of a problem? How can you force your students not to write the numerical value only, but to implement the general formula instead? A possible solution is to use random value generator functions such as rand, randi, or similar. The tricky part is that the scope of the reference solutions and the scope of the learner's solution shares the same seed when using random generators. That means in practice that variables with the same name in the reference and the learner's scopes will be consistent, even though when the value of the variable is based on random value of generating functions. In this situation, the parameters of the task can be random and changing whenever the code is executed. It is a bit different scenario when parameters are personalized, yet they are not changing by consecutive executions. Using a lookup table can be a solution here. Each row in the table may contain student ID and the parameters assigned to that student. That means the students must identify themselves. Then the corresponding test parameters will be loaded automatically. Thus, the expected solution depends on the actual student who is actually completing the test. This means there is no chance to define a generally applicable reference solution. The tricky part here is that the reference solution is integrated into the test cases. Thus, the assessment criteria are evaluated based on the actual parameters in use. Let's check it out how did it work in practice. The problem of Pythagorean theorem based on random generating function. You can see here that uh, in the reference solution, 
also in the learner's template, the value of A and B are based on a random generator functions. These functions generate uh, random integers on the interval 1 and 100. I check out the learner preview. I need to use the actual formula to pass the test because numbers A and B are changing every time I execute the code. But again, when submitting a solution with the general formula, I pass the tests. And what's about the use of lookup tables? We can see here that uh, files containing lookup tables with parameters and expected results are uploaded and referenced here, both into different solutions as well as in the learner's template. And which is the tricky part here, also in the test criteria. How these tables look like. Alright, for example, when I open up the parameters, I can see that there are students' IDs, for example, here instructor, Ellis, Bob, Cecile, etc. etc. And these are the corresponding uh, parameters. Okay. Let's say I'm Bob and I need to work with parameters A as 6, B as 9. So I will be Bob and C will be only correct when I use A as 6, B as 9. And again, the parameter A as 6, for example. Yeah. Also. Let's learn our preview. When I run the script, I can see that really the uh, A and B parameters have these uh, values given in the lookup table. And when submitting the solution, yeah, it is accepted. Again, the tricky part is that we need to explicitly refer to the student's ID and the lookup tables also in the test code. Here, as well as here. I hope all these informations were helpful to you and thank you for your attention.